Hi guys! I'm Jenna, also known as Ayla13. Today we're going to be learning about the first type of highlighting that beginners usually try, dry brushing. But first, what is a highlight? When light hits a three-dimensional surface, the rays areas will be hit with more light than the cracks and recesses. This tells our brain that the image we see is a three-dimensional one and it's not a flat drawing. Highlighting involves deliberately putting lighter colours on the raised parts of the miniature and leaving darker colours in the recesses so that it doesn't look flat. I'll be using a pumpkin patch from Super Dungeon Explore for this demo because of this lovely rough texture that will pick up the dry brushing well. Dry brushing suits rough textures like tree bark and fur. It's not so good for smooth textures like cloth or smooth armour plates. It will make these types of textures look too rough and patchy. Dry brushing involves putting a lighter colour over a darker base coat, so I'm going to start with a dark brown. It is important that your base coat is smooth, otherwise if there are any brush streaks, the dry brushing is going to highlight these imperfections. You can use a dry brushing brush, which will generally have thicker, stiffer bristles, but you could also just use a regular brush. Make sure that it's an old one though, because this technique will damage your bristles. Larger brushes will result in a better effect, but will also probably put paint on other parts of the miniature where the paint doesn't belong. This is why I always take care of any dry brushing first before doing other parts of the model. Smaller brushes will make less of a mess, but are also more prone to accidentally going into these crevices, ruining our dry brushing effect. Choose a paint which is a shade or two lighter than your base coat. I've chosen a Games Workshop brand for this because I find that their dry pigment works very well for dry brushing. Other brands like for instance P3 have a wet pigment, so it can be used for dry brushing but it requires a little more work. Transfer the paint to the palette making sure you don't get any paint into the brush's ferrule. But this time do not water down your paint. It's dry brushing, not wet brushing. Wipe off most, but not all, of the paint onto a clean paper towel. And then lightly drag the bristles across the surface of the model. A fine dusting of paint will appear on just the raised sections of the miniature. You may want to go over it a few times to build up the colour, just make sure the previous layer is dry or you'll be wiping it off. Try to paint in the opposite direction to any of the textures on the model. We want to avoid our bristles running into the crevices. This can be a very fast technique once you have the hack method. Here's the model after this step has been completed. You can already see that the dry brushing has really highlighted all of those textures on the model. You could leave it at this step, but I think that surfaces need about three colours minimum on them for depth, so I'm going to give it another lighter dry brush over the top. This time I choose a colour that's even lighter than my previous dry brush colour. I wipe the colour off even more so than last time, and I use a lighter pressure so that less paint is going on the model. Otherwise, I'll just be painting over the work I just did. I focus just on the very raised area so you can still see the original base coat in the crevices and a little bit of my first highlight covering the majority of the model. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Likes, comments and shares are appreciated. See you next time.